Hey, welcome back to another week here at the Tolerin. This is going to be probably a shorter video. I know it's my first week of vacation, but unfortunately I was sick the entire week. So it is Thursday. I will spend a few hours here today and then tomorrow before I put out the video. So hopefully we can get most of the drainage pipes done so that we can actually focus on something else the following week. You might be wondering why I took all of this piping, the drainage piping down and the venting. Well, I wanted to really simplify this whole thing and actually venting up in the, sec in the second floor above me is going to be a little simpler now that we have that shower wall. So I drilled two holes right over here from that wall. So we're going to vent right up there. I think long term this is going to be much better. The way we made this now is much simpler. The pipe on the right side, the pipe here on the right side is the toilet. Right away vents up, straight up and then what you can see here is the shower that's coming down and then it goes to the right and connects also to the uh, pipe and there's also a vent right above it. I'm not sure if you can see that but the vent goes straight up to into that wall that we built last week. And then it comes up, both of those, the right one from the toilet, the left one from the shower drain right here also, coming up, connecting, and then they both go up into the roof. I have to still figure out how I'm gonna connect them up here, but basically we will have a big vent stack coming out of the floor here anyways, that will go straight up, and we'll probably connect it up here in the roof line somewhere. So next on the list, I want to reroute this that we put in front of the beam. I will actually want to go through this joist, through this one and this third one over here and actually go down in the wall 
over here so that we don't have to put an extra header outside on this side of the beam. It's going to cover it up better and I think it's also going to be a shorter distance to actually go down to the drain. I think this looks pretty good now too. This is the double vanity in the kids bathroom. It's venting up straight up into everything else. It connects to the vent of the laundry sink that is gonna be on the other side of that wall. And then also the washing machine connects to this. All three of them are draining straight down to the floor. Gonna go along the joist and then down here into the ceiling and there I still have to connect it but it's gonna go basically almost straight down I can't go straight down because there is some joists floor joists right underneath there so I'm going to add a little move to the left here two elbows to go left and then back down The next step here in the basement is removing all the old ductwork. We obviously are going to redo all of our heating and cooling in the first uh, two levels of the building. So I'm going to just take it down. It doesn't really matter. We're not going to reuse it. It's all flex duct and we actually want solid duct because it's more efficient. It's also going to make the plumbing, the drainage pipes much easier down here in the basement because I don't have to try to work around all the ductworks that, is, uh, that are existing. Let's take a few seconds and let's talk about air conditioning units. 
or actually about the ductwork. So you can see here, rigid. So this is rigid piping over here, and this is flex piping. You can bend it around however you want. If you have an HVAC contractor helping you or even doing the job for you, for example, <clears throat> and they recommend using flex, uh, flex duct, I would recommend to use somebody else. So the problem with flex duct is, or I give you the advantage, it's easy to work with. You connect it, you connect it on the other side and you hang it. The problem with it is it's flexible, which makes it an advantage. But the big advantage, this, this advantage here is, as you can see, it's hanging here and then it's also mounted somewhere else. So it flexes in the middle and just hangs through. So now imagine if you're going down a water slide, if you have one <clears throat> straight tube to the bottom, or even if you have one bent in it, you will have a much higher speed than if you go down a water slide that just continuously has bumps in it. The problem here is friction. So when you have the air moving through the, uh, through the tube, through the pipe here, every single part that isn't smooth on the inside, the air will just hit that and will create turbulences. So the problem with flex pipe is it's not very smooth in the inside at all. It's actually some metal wire and then it has some kind of um, material around it, usually some kind of foil material around it. So that makes it very flexible. You can stretch it, you can move it, but each one of them creates ridges. So you have friction everywhere. And then especially here, the air, for example, on this one, move straight up and suddenly it has to make a turn now it has to go down and it makes another turn so everywhere here you have friction if this was a straight pipe it would be much more complicated of course for the contractor to put this in because they would have to make sure the run is going right there where it needs they put an elbow in maybe a second one they need to make, potentially fabricate two or three pieces so that it all fits together so it's going to be more expensive to use rigid, but it's also going to be much, much more efficient. So what you're going to save on the money on the flexible and also on the, on the time material and also on just the general cost from the contract that, that they put on top, you're going to make up with the rigid piping by actually being able to use a smaller system, a smaller air conditioning system. So the system doesn't have to work as hard because it's not gonna lose all that airflow when it pushes out. So smaller system, much cheaper, and also it's gonna work more efficiently long-term because it has to work much less. So therefore, you're gonna save long-term money and especially with the system that way, you are gonna replace the system that much less, and therefore you have to pay much more less, much less money. So it's an upfront cost to use the rigid one, but it's gonna save you a lot of money long term. Let me clarify a statement that I made. I said that if a contractor, an HVAC contractor, recommends to use flex duct, you should probably not use them. Let me clarify that a little bit. I think flex duct has its place, even though I don't know where that place is, but it definitely has its place 
for certain addict runs that you need to make that really are almost impossible with, with rigid to do. But in a situation like I have here, whichever company, I'm not naming anybody, did this system down here. They did a pretty decent job building here this main run. But then every single connection that they had to make up into the first floor is run with a flex duct. So cheap, quick, they probably did this in a day and had it all done. But they also had the space down here in the basement. We have about eight foot ceilings. They have the space, they have the access. So all they would have to do is fabricate some piping a little bit more complicated. But a good shop should have all their equipment to actually do any metal fabrication that they need. Because all they need to do is, most of the times, they should use round. Um, you will see sometimes square. Square should only be really be used if you're trying to make it run through a wall. I understand you, you won't have a 12 inch diameter or a 10 inch diameter or even an 8 inch diameter wall. So therefore, you will have to sometimes go with a square, square tube. But in general, you should use round rigid ducting. And yeah, you just have to make a few more elbows, put them there. And I think the important thing is also, most of the times you will see, when somebody underquotes somebody else, it's probably also that they don't do any calculations. With our modern technology, we calculate ductwork very simply. They actually have computer programs for all of that. They put the system in, it will size it for them. So what does it mean sizing? Well, you shouldn't just have the same size tube running everywhere. That's, the tube needs to be at the right size that each room gets the appropriate amount of air because you want each room to be comfortable and not have cold spots, hot spots. So you will pay more probably for a good contractor because they do a calculation. They will use rigid ducting everywhere unless really otherwise not possible. And they will probably also do a better job and you will have an appropriate system because part of that calculation is sizing the system and you don't, they don't just um, go with this little school go calculation of saying, oh, I have this many square foot, therefore I need this ton of, this tonnage on my AC. No, you should actually calculate that based on your system needs, that the size of the building that you have, what's the system need that you actually will need to have. All those, the calculations will actually tell that the HVAC guy and then they will put the appropriate system in and long term the house will be more comfortable and also it will be less maintenance long term. And another downside of these flex tucks, if you have a HVAC cleaning company coming out and they see that you have flex duct, they will actually not clean the sections where you have flex duct. Reason why that is, is because when they, when they start cleaning these flex ducts, they will actually break them. So another reason, if you want to have your yearly cleaning or bi-yearly cleaning done to have not all your pollen and other dust in the system, you actually should use rigid ducting.
If you're wondering why I cleaned up down here in the basement, well, first reason I want to move all the windows and everything that was left over that we want to keep into this area so we can keep it for safekeeping. And then um, I want to clean the rest of this room up and move all the wood that we had over there um, where it where we sometimes have some water issues and move all that trim back into this corner after this whole area is cleaned up. This is right below the kitchen where we fixed everything so we won't have any more dirt and dust getting made underneath here. So we should be good. And then the second reason is right here is where the pipe from upstairs is going to come down and also another one from right over there. This is the dining room above us. So the kids bathroom will come, the piping, the drainage pipes will come right down here. So we will have to feed it from the corner over here, over all the way over here, along this beam, then go underneath the beam through here and then connect it all the way over where the window is. I think it looks much better already. Obviously we still have to remove some of the junk and especially over here, all the old duct work. I still have to cut it out over there, but that will have to wait for tomorrow. And over here we got all the tools lined up now. I just need to clean up the rest of the room and then take this stuff to the landfill. So I wanted to wish all the mothers out there a happy Mother's Day and especially my wife who's taking care of our two little ones all the time. She's doing a wonderful job and then also my mom and in Austria and my mother-in-law who also lives in town. Thanks for all the help all the time and well happy Mother's Day and I will see you guys all next week because this is it for this week. I know I was sick so I didn't get as much done as I wanted this week but I think we made some pretty decent progress. I will see you guys next week. Thanks. Bye.